Mensch. What's good, YouTube? It's your boy 2K to God, your boy Sess. We're getting ready to start another segment. It's gonna be called Hyper Nice. And this is gonna be pretty much where we take prospects uh, and or just contenders, champions, whoever, that are getting a lot of media attention. And we're gonna break down their style, break down the type of fighter they are, and basically come up with a conclusion whether or not they're actually all hype or are they nice. They're living up to the hype or at least the media attention uh, that they're actually receiving. For this one, we're going to give you a little treat. Uh, me and my boy Sess, man, we don't ever disagree. It's a rarity that you'll see us disagreeing. Mm. But for this particular fighter, we're on opposite sides of the spectrum. Uh, yes, we totally disagree. <laughs> we actually got into some heated debates. This will not be the first time we get into another heated debate. Uh, but we about to dig into this shit. So it's gonna be hyper nice, Deontay Wilder. Now let me start off by saying, fuck all the niggas, <laughs> fuck bomb squad, fuck Deontay. Nah, I'm just playing. <laughs> but uh, but uh, nah, man, Deontay Wilder, man, he he's an all right fighter to me. He's not he's not uh at the prestige of what his belt says that he is. Um, holding the WBC crown, the World Boxing Council, that is one of, if not the most prestigious belts you can have um and the problem with Deontay Wilder is a lot of people are still seeing him as a prospect I think his team still sees him as a prospect uh hence the type of competition he's been fighting since he got the WBC crown I mean he tried to he tried to get Hugh Fury my man's feet are not even wet as a professional boxer yet right then he fights Eric Molina and then he fights Johan Duhapis. He tried to get Hugo Fury before fighting Johan Duhapis. He couldn't get him. So he went to the next worst thing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and that type of shit to me is unacceptable, right? Um, but that's his team. I mean, let's talk about his skill. I've watched him spar multiple times over the years uh, throughout his career. And I don't see too much of a difference. I've seen him progress this much. Granted as uh, pretty much as what we perceive of him, he's progressed from a prospect to a contender, no doubt, right? Mm -hmm. But see, he's already at the elite level, whether he's elite or not, you feel what I'm saying? So given the fact that he's at the elite level, regardless of whether or not he's elite, he has to show up. And his skills to me, don't look like he can show up against the elite in the division. Although, I will give him this. He has a nice jab. He has good hand speed for a heavyweight. He's starting to work on his footwork a little bit better. I still have a problem with him going backwards and doing this shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the cats are going, going at him, swinging, or trying to get on the inside. This is his defense while he's moving back. And he finds <laughs> himself on the ropes and shit by doing that, right? Uh, very similar to Amir Khan and how the fuck he tries to elude punches uh, from pressure fighters. Um, he has to work on that uh, and one thing that I did see against Johan Duhapis was he turned his opponent and that was something I've never seen him do before um, but once again he's, he's chinny he was hurt by two D level fighters Eric Molina and Johan Duhapis Johan Duhapis actually swelled up his fucking eye finish them up finish <laughs> I mean, that's, that's unacceptable, B. At, at the level that he's at, that's completely unacceptable. And I, I expect a lot more from Deontay Wilder. What you got for me, man? All right, man. Let me let me go ahead on and go in on this, man. Okay, so, I mean, is he, is he, is he not supposed to get hit okay. in a fight? In a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a fight that goes past the, the first four rounds. Is Deontay Wilder not supposed to get hit? Let me say this. <laughs> Johan Duhapis would have got his motherfucking ass cremated 
against Vladimir Klitschko <laughs> and Tyson Fury, B. I'm sorry. He would have got fucked cremates. Eric Molina got cremated by Chris Ariola. Eric Molina got knocked out in the first round by Chris Ariola. Mm-hmm. But then he goes in there against Deontay Wilder and finds an <laughs> uppercut that's 100%. That, that's a, that's <laughs> absolutely. No, and you know what? You're absolutely accurate in what you're saying. But at the end of the day, Deontay Wilder, the Browns bomber, wow. found a way to stay on both feet and to put both guys on their backs. Right. So that's the one thing about Deontay Wilder, man, that I'm pretty big on is his resolve. This guy, you can hurt him, you can rock him, you can buckle him, we've seen it. And guess what? The guy finds it within himself to keep coming at you and stick to the game plan with a little bit of an adjustment. And that's what you need. At 29 years old, Deontay Wilder, Deontay Wilder is showing me that he can make the adjustment and put these guys on their backs, not go 12 rounds with them. It would be a problem if he was going 12 rounds with these guys, if they were rocking him and, and buckling, buckling him and he was going 12 rounds. But he's not doing that. He's saying, give me what you got. And guess what? You're going to be staring up at the lights at the end of whatever round. And on, <clears throat> on top of that, Deontay is 6'7 with an 83-inch reach, OK? The guy doesn't move like he's, uh, like he's 6'7. He has very, you, and you said this earlier, he has very good hand speed, a big right hand, OK? The only thing I see in Deontay right now is, of course, his defense. But if Vladimir Klitschko can make a career out of jab and grab, Deontay Wilder at 29 can learn how to be a better defensive fighter because he's he's still very impressionable. And that's the thing that I like about Deontay is that he's not one of those fighters that you just can't change. He's not an Adrian Broner. You know, you can't. And I, I understand. How do, we, how do we know that? How do we know he's not a... Because we've, we've seen it. We've seen it. Each time Deontay has gotten better, when he first came into the sport, he was a jab, straight right hand type of fighter. I call him two steps. But that's he only a, because he was knocking everybody out in the first round. You didn't and, get and, an and, opportunity and, to see if he was and, a more a guy that had a more punch okay, variation. Well, hey, you know what? I'm sorry. I'm sorry his opponents can't handle the power. Now, All right, right. When, we, when, we, when we did need to see that, Bermain Stavern, Eric Molina, Johan de Hoppus. Like I said, these guys are not A-level fighters, and I absolutely understand that. D-level. But, but okay, <laughs> yeah, I mean, come on now, they not. motherfuckers wouldn't even pass in school with that grade, B. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Bermain Stavern can get by. And, and, and Deontay Wilder was in a position in the Bermain Stavern fight to where it was put up or shut up. Are you the real deal or are you or, or are you just hype? Are right. we just hearing about this kid right. and he's not producing, or can you produce? And you know what? He went in that fight and beat the shit out of Stavern, and he rocked him. Now, and you I, got rocked too. And, and you know what? That may that may be, but who was on the ground? Who was on the ground? Who was Stavern? Stavern. There wasn't Stavern. no knockdown in that fight. Yes, it was, sir. Go, sure, go even, back and watch the fight. Okay. okay. In the second round, in, in the first or second round, I believe he hurt him in the first and he dropped him in the second. Okay? okay. Eric Molina buckles Deontay with a, I believe it was a left hook. Mm-hmm. Could have been a left hook or an uppercut, but he never dropped Deontay. Deontay took the shot, came back, and dropped him with his own left hook twice. So that tells me that Wilder has power in both hands. Dude, okay, no it don't. Okay. I'm not saying that he doesn't. <laughs> I'm not saying that he doesn't. Hear me out. What I'm saying is watching him hit and knock out a D-level fighter in Eric Molina does not say, hey, this man has power in both hands because you don't know if that power can transfer up to the elite fighters. Right? It did in the Bermain. It did in the Bermain Stavern fight. Bermain Stavern is not an elite fighter. But right? he was the WBC champion. Absolutely. <laughs> I, 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 you know what? And you can't, you can't say that he wasn't. Right? That's facts. Mm-hmm. But see, Bermain Stavern was in the same situation Deontay Wilder was in, is in now. Okay. He's a B-level fighter. 
who beat another B to C level fighter. Okay. Who, just, who he was fighting for the vacant WBC title, right? Yep. And then he stepped up and look what happened. He got beat. Same guy with Deontay Wilder. He's he's a he's a B level fighter who beat another B level fighter to get a belt. And guess what's gonna happen when he steps up? He gonna beat the next man. <laughs> <laughs> Whomever, whomever that may be, Deontay Wilder is going to beat them. I'm telling you, this kid has a very nice jab. He's got a very nice jab that's developing, and it's going to be better than where it is right now. Yeah, speculation, that's, though. And, we I, I, all, and, everybody's all, and everybody and their mom is saying that Deontay Wilder needs a new trainer. What if he doesn't get a new trainer? Can his trainer take him to the next level at developing his jab and all the other uh, oh, absolutely. intangibles that he needs to develop to be able to be an elite fighter. Right now, right now, Deontay Wilder needs a new trainer in terms of um, his defensive game. He needs a trainer that's going to teach him how to take the next step defensively because if he doesn't get that by the time he fights elite competition, Deontay will lose. You can't have, um, you can't, you can't have that mummy type of defense where you got your arms wide out and you know, <laughs> you know, you can't. So I'll give you that. You can't have that type of defense. And Deontay Wilder is not the jab and grab type. So he's gonna need another trainer to take him to that, um, to reach that defensive prowess. Yeah. But at this point in time, Deontay Wilder, with his skill set, offensively, mm -hmm. offensively, Deontay Wilder beats Alexander Provekin because Provekin is your. And I know I'm gonna catch a lot of slack for that. Pavekin is your typical walk forward type of fighter. At least Johan de Hoppus had the wherewithal to put his jab before his first, to uh, put his jab behind his first step. Yeah, he did that for four rounds. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and you know what? He was getting the shit beat out of him. So Pavekin, if he walks in, if he walks at Wilder like that, he he walks directly into a behind. And he's not gonna get stung too many times before he turns it in. Okay. Tight. One more. One okay, more point. Yeah. One more point. Go ahead, Tyson Fury will not beat Deontay Wilder oh. if they were to fight. No, absolutely not. I'm revoking absolutely your damn, not. I'm revoking your. <laughs> <laughs> I'm revo revoking your enthusiast card, man. You're absolutely. You're no longer an expert. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> well, let me let me get it back real quick. Absolutely not. Tyson Fury does not beat Deontay Wilder. Tyson Fury does not have the power, if you ask me, to, to take Wilder off his feet. A lot of people look at Tyson Fury as if he has power. No, Fury has a, the, uh, the punch accumulation you need to get guys out of there, but he won't be able to tee off on Deontay Wilder like that. And we've seen him get dropped by Steve Cunningham, a former cruiserweight. Wilder knocks, him, Wilder knocks him out. Wilder knocks him out. I don't know how many rounds just yet, but Wilder knocks this guy out. What you got for me? Man, look, B. You, you, you're out of control, B. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody put a straight jacket on this nigga. Hey, they're going to have to. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> nah, I'll fuck with you. Tyson Fury beats Deontay Wilder right now simply because my man is 6'9". I believe he has an 84 inch reach reach. Mm -hmm. which can be it, it it's an advantage, but it's not a big advantage over Deontay Wilder, right? No. Um, Tyson Fury, he has a whole lot of variables to his game. Watching the Steve Cunningham fight, honestly he beat the brakes off of Steve Cunningham. The only oh, yeah. criticism I have of of uh, Tyson Fury is what you said. He let a fucking cruiserweight knock him down. But you said earlier, B, that was more like a flash. That was, it was. what you conceded, right? It was. So it was. It's a situation where anyone could have gotten caught and taken off their feet. Anyone. Especially mm -hmm. Deontay Wilder, the same guy who kept getting hit by fucking repeated right uppercuts by D-level fighter and Eric Molina. Especially Deontay Wilder, the same guy. Eric that, Molina can crack. Eric Molina, no, nah, fuck that. He did, <laughs> he did, no, nah, fuck that, B. Like I said, Chris Ariola knocked his bitch ass out in the first 
fucking round. Areola can crack. Areola, Areola can, can crack. crack. But Areola is not an intelligent fighter. You see and, what I'm and he's not. He's, he's not. Terrible. He's not. But but that's the reason why. That's the reason why I am very high on Deontay Wilder because none of these guys beat him. Provekin will not beat him with that defense. Provekin's get he he, he gets but stopped. Provekin's defense ain't no different than Molina's, and Molina was able to get inside of Deontay Wilder with fucking ease. Matter of fact, no. matter of fact, Eric Molina was slipping this nigga's jab. Deontay, but guess Deontay what? Wilder does not fight any better. Provek is not going to do fight that. To the Johan Duhapis fight, B. Oh, yes, he no, does. B. No, dude, his jab is much. B. No way. His, don't, no, his jab I, I is much you, better. I know what you want to say. Punch variation. And I'm going to tell you yes. this right now. The only reason why you seeing punch variation is because his fucking man is standing like this. <laughs> it's just, hey, like, it's just don't... like with Winky Wright. Okay? okay. I love Winky, you two. Yeah, Winky yeah, Wright yeah. is my fucking man. But the problem with Winky Wright in his career and why he always lost close fights that everyone probably thought he should have won is because he stood there in a peekaboo guard the whole fucking fight and he was letting his opponents tee off on him. Now, whether or not those punches landed, it looks good to the judges and they're liable to score rounds to the opponent. This is exactly what Johan Duhabis is doing. Same thing with fucking Arthur Abraham. When he fought Robert Stieglitz, everyone knows Abraham comes in a peekaboo fucking guard. And then okay. he explodes out of this guard, right? Okay. But see, Robert Stieglitz is a flashy fighter. Fast hands, fast footwork, right? So mm -hmm. he's teeing off on fucking Abraham. That's how he beat him. Same okay. shit, B. So, uh, uh, but, uh, so what, no, I'm, no. what I'm saying is, if Johan Duhapis was more like Eric Molina, right? was mm -hmm. actually getting on the inside of this motherfucker, we wouldn't have been seeing this punch variation because all he's doing is just standing on the outside and teeing off on a guy who's not being offensive. That's easy, man. But guess I can't what? say he has that and, and Do Hoppers didn't try to punch him. Come Same on. result. Same result either way. Same result oh, either I'm way. Oh, because Do Hoppers is a D-level <laughs> fighter. <laughs> yeah, same result. You're absolutely right. But I'm just saying, I'm not ready to say my man has extravagant punch variation, and we only saw that against two guys. Bermain Stiver and a guy whose footwork from level one to ten is a fucking one, right? <laughs> he doesn't move for shit, and he just, Bermain is just like this up against the ropes. He just waits for you, he tries to bait you in. All Deontay had to do is stay on the outside and fucking tee off. That's all he did. But he couldn't Look. do it against a guy who moved to get on the inside like Eric Molina. That's what I'm saying. And Pavekin, while I do, I, I'm with you on this, I do think he beats Pavekin. Pavekin moves way better than Eric Molina. He has much better punch variation. And Eric Molina was literally going like this. Like, as soon as he got inside, <laughs> motherfucker, same right uppercut. Then this motherfucker even threw it from the outside. Like, this, like, you can't do that shit from that <laughs> distance. Be calm. I know that punch is working for you, but calm down. <laughs> Pavekin ain't going to do that shit, B. He's going to get on the inside, and I guarantee you, if he touches Deontay, B, Mr. Chinny Chin Chin. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The motherfucker hey. might get laid out, B. All right. Well, you know, I... I I won't, I won't doubt that Provetkin is an extremely hard puncher. I, I honestly, I have nothing against Provetkin. I think, yeah. I think he's, I think he's a pretty good heavyweight. Um, but let's go back, let's go back to the Klitschko fight. Yeah. Provetkin got hit with a left hook that, honestly, it wasn't the hardest I've seen Klitschko land a left hook on a guy. If I go back to the Pulev fight, he was blasting Pulev with some. With some flush left hooks. Provetkin caught a left hook that didn't land as hard as as the Pulev left hooks were landing, and he was on the ground, and he was noticeably at, he was noticeably hurt when he got up. It wasn't necessarily the flash knockdown where a guy gets dropped and gets back up. Provetkin was Provetkin was hurt. Now he he didn't he didn't show it. But I can tell in his body language that it was a shot that did shake him up a little bit, okay? And the one thing that Provekin was doing that I noticed when Klitschko was not holding, couldn't get past the jab because of the way he was coming in. He was walking in behind nothing. He was in a crouched guard, which led to the jab 
and grab type of the uh, type of a tactic that Klitschko likes to use. Right. Povetkin doesn't beat him. Mike Perez doesn't beat him. Chris Ariola doesn't beat him. I now I would love to see Deontay fight these guys. Chris Ariola doesn't beat him. But just what to to point out something that you said earlier, I can't blame um, the Hoppers. I can't blame Molina. I can't blame um, uh, Stavern for, I mean, I'm sorry, I can't blame Deontay for these guys fighting him the way that they did in that tight type of a pick guard. You know, I, I honestly believe if you want to go rounds with Deontay Wilder, that's the only way you can, that's the only way you can fight this guy. If you, if you, you if you, if you want to get past the first round oh, with Wilder, oh, okay. the, 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 the main way to fight him, and that's the, and that's why I think guys are starting to try and fight him that way in that high guard type of a defense is because they know that, okay, let me see what he's got. Let me see what he got, you know, uh, with shots that they know aren't going to land flush. But the minute they open up, they go to sleep. And that's what I'm liking about Deontay Wilder. Like I, like I said earlier, this kid has got a good punch variation. He's got fast hands. He, uh, He's adding new wrinkles, like you alluded to earlier. He's starting to turn his opponents. I cannot overlook the small progressions that I'm seeing. Um, I don't, and we talked about this earlier, a fight that I believe Deontay wins, the Brian Jennings fight. Jennings will not be able to uh, to beat Deontay. He's not strong enough. We've seen that in the uh, Vladimir Klitschko have fight. To be. He's, yes, Deontay, he does. Deont- no, yes, he Deontay does. Wilder is not a physical fighter. Deontay Wilder thinks he's Muhammad Ali right now. He thinks he <laughs> has, and you know I'm right, B. He thinks his jab is what you're trying to make it out to be this month. <laughs> <laughs> nah, fuck that. The motherfucker ain't got no goddamn piston like Jazz. He it's, uses it to it's set becoming the one. right hand, B. It's becoming one. It's becoming one. It can be one. I'll give you that. Absolutely. He has the potential to make it become one. Yes. Aside uh, from Vladimir Klitschko, who beats him? But right. But the problem with what we just what what we just agreed to is it's becoming a piston like Jazz. Well, the fact that he's the most prestigious belt holder right now, it's not it's becoming, it needs to be right now. You feel I'll give you that. I'll give you That's that. That's the fucking problem. That. So, and Brian Jennings, he slipped Klitschko's jab. Like, the second half of that fight, Brian Jennings was coming back on this motherfucker. It's he was. Like, he was doing like, good. Fuck it, B. I feel, and he actually rocked Klitschko, had the motherfucker up against the ropes, right? Okay. I feel... That if Brian Jennings comes into the fight against Deontay Wilder, fighting the way he did against Klitschko in the second half of that fight, that's a close fight, B. And, and, and Brian Jennings has a beard on his ass. Don't he let does. Don't make the chin, B. That, that's a close fucking fight simply because if he fights the same way, like I said, Brian Jennings is going to apply pressure and your man, your man, not fight on his back foot, B. <laughs> Terrible I, fighting on his back foot. B. And that's, that's, I I do believe that's one of the aspects that Deontay, that we haven't, that Deontay hasn't necessarily, um, you know, gotten to yet. I'm not making excuses for him. No, does I know he need to be, yeah. Does he need to be a complete fighter holding the WBC strap? Absolutely. Does he have the potential to be um, a, com- a complete fighter? Absolutely. Will a guy like Brian Jennings beat him? I don't believe so. I think it's a close fight. I think Deontay will pull it out. Um, uh, Jennings does have a good beard on him, but let's not get it twisted. Well, Latimer Klitschko is not as offensive as Deontay Wilder. Well, Latimer Klitschko, the problem that I'm having with him getting uh, as he's getting older is that he tends to use his jab more as a uh, as just a punch than he does to actually set up his right hand. He actually waits for the absolute perfect time to throw his right hand. It's something that just irritates the hell out of me. He'll jab you for two minutes of the whole round, and then the last 30 seconds, he might throw two right hands. Mm-hmm. He's not as offensive as a Deontay Wilder. So, yes, Brian Jennings just does have a good beard on him. But I, that's the one thing that I'm loving about Deontay Wilder is the fact that the dude does not wait to throw 
any punch that he sees. If he thinks he can get the right hand in there, he is going to throw it. If he thinks he can get the left hand in there, he is going to throw it. So I love that fight. Yeah, you're but, absolutely right against D-level fighters. No, yes. well, you know yeah, what? He's hey, going to throw it, B. We'll that's, see. That's why I can't. <laughs> I just can't do it. I can't. I cannot sit here and Please. give him these attributes that we are seeing him display against D level fighters. B, I or C D to at least at at, at best C minus level. I can't <laughs> be. I can't. Like click. I feel Deontay Wilder will not be as active if he's in the ring with a guy that actually slips his jab like Eric Molina. And Eric Molina wasn't even, it's not like Eric Molina was like this. He wasn't. The motherfucker just ran in there. <laughs> and Deontay was like, oh, no, where you at? Oh, shit. He couldn't. If you smother Deontay's punches and get on the inside, this, let me say this real quick, B. Okay. Yeah, we run out of time. Okay, okay. What beats Deontay Wilder is a guy that can get on the inside and continuously touch him. Mm. That's what beats Deontay Wilder. Not what Johan Duhapis is doing. I liked what he did coming up in the high guard and going behind the jab. Because going behind the jab with Deontay, he's automatically going to go backwards. Because yeah. Deontay doesn't like to get hit. That's what I'm noticing too. Mm -hmm. So if you're jabbing at him, he's going to go back, right? At that moment that he goes back, that's when you go on the inside, start giving him work, right? Duhapis wasn't doing that until he got Deontay up against the ropes. No, I need somebody doing that up against the ropes, in the middle of the ring, outside the ring, in the locker room, at his girl's house, at his mama house B. Put the motherfucking jab in his face, make a move back, then get on the inside and get to motherfucking work. The first guy who does that beats him. Uh, uh, he don't even need to be like this. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> get on the inside, get to work, you'll beat him. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, 2K. But <laughs> but at this moment, nobody does that. Okay. And that's the reality that's of uh of the of the contenders in the heavyweight division. Right. The only guy that may be able to do that is Pravekin, but Pravekin's defense is is it's lackluster, and I'm not impressed by it. So at this moment, at this time, I don't see Deontay Wilder being beat by anybody but maybe a Willard or McClisco because of the experience factor. But at the end of the day, realistically, all Deontay Wilder has to do is land on a guy like Willard or McClisco. He's extremely chinny, and I can see Klitschko doing good in that fight because he does have a lot of experience. And I'm a I'm a big Klitschko fan. I love the guy. I think he's a I think he's a great heavyweight. I don't necessarily like some of his tactics. I don't either. But at the end of the day, I've got to respect uh his body of work. Right, right, right. But being realistic, all Wilder has to do is touch him. Mike Perez, Mike Perez is has a good Cuban style. He's a uh he, he likes to box. Head. He moves his head very well. Mike and, Perez. Perez does, but at the end of the day, Perez is not one of those guys that's gonna um, that's gonna do what you said need, needs to be done to beat Deontay. Perez is not gonna have that aggressive, you know. Uh, I'm just afraid that he gets caught because you know Pavekin knocked him out in the first round. Yeah. That plays on your mentality. Yeah. So before that fight, I mean, my man even put a man in the hospital. He put a. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Magomedov, some shit like that. I think that was actually <laughs> his fucking name. But yeah. he put that cat in the hospital, B. And he it did. was all just effective punching on the inside. That's how he that's how he did my man like that. Yeah. Uh, Magomedov was undefeated. And mm. he was a highly touted prospect at the time. Mm. So I think this knockout of Pavekin fucks with his mentality. So mm. I wouldn't say Mike Perez beats him now. But the older Mike Perez, before that, that fuck with Pavekin, that's actually the template that can actually beat Deontay Wilder. That's mm. the template right there. Oh, that's, that's a great head movement. That's a good point. That's a good point. I think. I think. I think. Um. I think you could definitely make a case for that fight. But uh, this Mike Perez do doesn't beat him. Chris Ariola, no. damn sure, damn sure doesn't beat him. I no. think Chris Ariola gives it gives it a go because he's always game. Yeah. Um. Especially when he when he trains and he's focused. But he gets knocked out. 
I mean, so at, at this moment in the heavyweight division, I don't see these guys beating Deontay Wilder. I'm uh this guy, like I said, I'm big on him, and 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 I think I'm, I'm gonna stay pretty high on him, man. And that's fair, no problem with that. Let me ask you a question, man. Give me, oh yeah, give me a real quick answer. So on these different forums on on Facebook and a lot of the different groups that I'm a part of, um, also on uh, Boxing News 24, Boxing Scene, I've seen a lot of posts with people basically saying that Deontay Wilder is going to unify the division within the next year. What do you think about that? Within the next year? Yes, sir. By the end of 2016. Mm. Not within the next year. Yeah. Not within the next year. I would say uh, a year and a half to two years would be would be looking at it, you know, from a good uh, from a good perspective. I just I don't see him doing it within a year. Okay. Um, uh, he he needs to improve his game a little bit more. Like I said, uh, defensively. Definitely, if he's gonna do it, if he were a better defensive fighter, absolutely. I would say in a year, yeah. I would, I would, I would give him a year. But um, I would say a year and a half to two years, man. That's realistic. I, I, I definitely, I can definitely, definitely see it. You know, bring the titles home, bring them all home. We waiting <laughs> yeah. on. <them>. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the, the, I am actually waiting on the next American heavyweight, but I, I mean, I got to call it like I see it, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but to, to, to touch on your point again, yeah, he needs better defense, and my man need to take the Mayweather tactic, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Put the weight over his head. Ah, uh, hey. Put that motherfucker chin <laughs> where he be, because if he don't be that motherfucker, I'm telling you, man, get that neck rolling so you can so you can be able to take the force of them punches on the chin. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. So, that's, I, I hope they bring in some of those type of tech, some some of those type of um, some of those type of things to uh, into his camp. Mm -hmm. I really do. He, he's he's already shown me that he can, that he's got great resolve, man. I mean, I can't I can't overlook that. You know, a lot of times guys go into uh, fight or flight mode. They get touched and they don't want to be in there. No uh, Wilder gets touched and shit. He's in he's in for the long haul. Mm -hmm. You know. All right, man. So we go ahead and go ahead and uh, conclude this excellent fucking debate. What do you think, Deontay Wilder? Nice or hype? Ah, uh, a hundred percent nice. <laughs> that was a dumbass question, but I got to ask my man. You know, I'm a I'm a surprise y'all, man. I'm gonna go with nice. Oh, and, okay. <laughs> and and the reason being is because he has the potential. See, if you if you talk about hype. You're really looking at a man's body of work, and then you're actually comparing that to his potential, and you're saying, nah, he can't live up to shit, right? Yeah. Deontay Wilder, though I don't think he's living up to the hype right now, he has the potential to be able to do it. He just needs the right team, he needs the right mindset, and I feel like he can actually be one of the best heavyweights. So I'm gonna go ahead and, yeah. and be optimistic and say that he's nice. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's real. Word, word. All right, fam. Go ahead and conclude this. It's your boy 2K to God, your boy Sess. Uh, drop us a comment. Do what you do, but be real. This is real talk for real fans.